There's a motto for nursing that says with great power comes great responsibility. It's something I'm, again, very passionate about, and it just is my calling. She watched her grandmother, a lifelong nurse, and she knew it would be her life as well. You're taking care of people. You have, you know, lives that are in your hands that you have to care for. As a healthcare technician, she cared for an Alzheimer's patient until she passed. It made her certain that she wanted more to become a nurse. Yet those on the front lines of healthcare say they've reached a breaking point. I don't think everybody was aware of the struggle that the nursing staff, our faculty, or uh, on the units were experiencing. For this generation of new nurses, their instructors, and the entire healthcare industry, the COVID pandemic placed their workplace under a spotlight not just for the sheer number of people who found themselves fighting to live, but for those professionals who wondered if they could continue and just how to do it. In the beginning, on the floor itself, we saw a change. People were leaving because of the need to take the COVID, COVID shot. Um, others were making decisions to stay home with their family if they had someone that had, was immunocompromised. And this one's just going to go on my finger over here. The need for those nurses meant Charlotte's hospitals would have to shell out millions to keep their facilities staffed. It prompted the expansion of a career option for many in the healthcare field called traveling nurses. National statistics show there are more than 1.6 million traveling nurses. 84% of all traveling nurses are women, 15% or so men. The average age of an employed traveling nurse is 44 years old, and the most common are traveling nurses who are Caucasian, about 70%, followed by African Americans and Asians. Traveling nurses are paid an average annual salary of more than $83,000, and their starting salary, around $53,000. We've been very intentional of making sure that we had a good mix, a good staffing model, so that uh, we had appropriate patient, uh, patient ratios, uh, which again required us to bring in traveling talent, but absolutely never took our eye off of taking care of our, our own team aubergine. According to statistics from NC NurseCast, a workforce model developed by UNC Chapel Hill says that within the next decade, North Carolina could face a shortage of more than 12,000 nurses. Both Atrium and Novant Health are offering signing bonuses, yet those who travel and those who decide to stay must work together, many times leading to floor politics. There's a little bit of a stigma with it because you have a little bit of rub between staff nurses and travel nurses because one's making more. Um, so you just kind of have to learn to work through that and work together as a team. Each year, around 200 students enter Central Piedmont's nursing program. As classes like these gear up to meet that need, the traveling nurses are filling the gaps and changing how many see their profession. We're seeing more students come in our nursing program that are talking about travel nursing, where before they weren't talking about it, they didn't know about it. But I'd eventually love to get into traveling because there's so many opportunities. You can and you pick anything under the sun and they have, a, they have a job for it. Traveling, yes. I mean, there's more money to be made in traveling, but it's, it's also about the availability. And so if somebody is up for it, great, but for me, and my situation right now, I think I'm gonna stay put. She has a family and children in school, but she's concerned that the interest in traveling is having a ripple effect on hospitals. The main concern for me is about the shortage and also with working short staff, because when there's shortage, then it means you get on the floor to work and there's not that many people, you don't have enough help. We've invested nearly $500 million in taking care of our team members in many different roles here at Novant Health. Rapid hiring, you know, how quickly can we do an appropriate but thorough interview process? You know, rapid interviews, centralized interviews, uh, mass hiring. It's not just nursing positions, but respiratory therapists, lab technicians, someone to check the patients in, translators, and more. Well, you know, shame on us if we haven't learned lessons from the pandemic. 
you know, what we've learned is the value of looking at talent across the spectrum. What is the value right now and how do we take full advantage of the five generations that are currently in the workforce? For everyone involved, the bottom line is the same, improving health care for patients and the overall health of the staff. I think there needs to be more people in it because that's what you want to do. You want to help people and you want to, you know, be there for people in, in a time of need. So it's not just about the money that you're making. It's also about having the love to care for people. For the ones in the nursing industry, the bottom line is better health care. For Carolina Impact, I'm B. Thompson. Thanks for watching, and if you don't want to miss any more great regional stories, please subscribe to our PBS Charlotte YouTube channel.